over a period of like four years, I started getting really clumsy and and very awkward, and then and just falling over, and until eventually I was walking, hanging on to my friends, and and then I had to get a wheelchair. I see the use of embryonic stem cell research as the best shot we have to absolutely finding a definite cure. I am personally opposed to uh, destruction of embryos. And if I had a vote in Parliament, I'd vote against legislating to permit the destruction of embryos. I'd always be opposed to destroying an embryonic human life to save an adult human life. Many scientists and doctors believe that stem cell research will open up a whole new way of treating people with serious injuries and diseases. There are stem cells in most parts of your body. Their job is to replace damaged or worn out cells and tissues. For instance, as you watch this program, stem cells in your bone marrow are dividing to make millions of new blood cells every second. Scientists have now learned how to collect stem cells from embryos just a few days old. Because development is at such an early stage, researchers believe these embryonic stem cells may be the most valuable of all in the search for new medical treatments. Collecting these stem cells destroys the embryo. So how can scientists have access to human embryos? People who've had in vitro fertilisation treatments often have two or three children and don't want any more and there are still embryos left over in the deep freeze. Then they get asked, what do you want to do with those embryos? Do you want to donate them to another couple? And very few people actually want to do that. Or do you want them destroyed? Do you want them to continue to be frozen? Or do you want to donate them for research? There are different views about this kind of research. We're arguing that uh, there is there's very strong humanitarian and medical reasons for utilising some of these embryos to grow embryonic stem cell lines to investigate the medical opportunities here. You only have to have impact from patients with severe diseases or disabilities to understand that there is a very high demand for some assistance in this area and this offers us one of the best opportunities at the present time. I quite understand that the researchers working in this area are motivated by high ideals. They wish in the first place uh, to provide therapies for various diseases. I have one huge problem, that is, it does involve the destruction of a human embryo and I believe human embryos have a right to be respected and, and protected in an absolute way. And this is because it's the beginning of human life. In the case of IVF embryos, where a couple have completed their family and no longer require their excess IVF embryos, these embryos are frozen in liquid nitrogen, whether those embryos are thawed and discarded, put in the bin, or whether they're used for research, I believe is quite a simple question. Whether they're frozen or not, they are embryos. And once they are thawed, they are still embryos. And once we start experimenting on them, that involves active destruction of embryos. It makes no difference whether they will be destroyed the day after. The one who performs that research is destroying an embryo. And that's where my moral objection is to that. It's perhaps worth asking, what is an embryo? And really, um, it's a term that is often misused in the community and means different things to different people. When I say embryo, I'm thinking about an early stage of development where there's a collection of cells. There's a great distinction between what happens to the embryo in culture in those first days and what happens when transferred into the uterus, when the embryo in the next couple of weeks, in plants, undergoes massive differentiation, organisation and structural formation, ultimately forming a foetus. Embryonic stem cell research does not work with foetuses. 
It works with early embryos, collections of cells. Once the sperm and egg meet, a process begins which is developmentally continuous all the way into adulthood. So that the life process begins once the sperm does enter the egg. And particularly once syngamy is achieved, where they form a new joint life force. The word embryo from the Greek means the one growing within. debate about using embryos for stem cell research, I think, frustrates me beyond belief because it, I mean, they're not even alive yet and there's so many of us dying and in pain and we need this research and we need it to happen now. In a scenario that they achieve these um, life-saving therapies as a result of using embryonic stem cells, my objection to destroying embryos to save uh, others' lives would still stand. In other words, one may not destroy a life to save another life. Scientists are exploring a new way to produce embryonic stem cells using a technique called nuclear transfer. They collect a body cell, say a skin cell, from a person. They take the nucleus from that cell, the part containing all the genes, and transfer it into a human egg, which has had its own nucleus removed. If they can get the egg to start dividing, it could form an embryo. But this would be no ordinary embryo. It would be a clone, an exact genetic copy of the person donating the cell. Why would scientists want to do this? Let's say the person had a serious genetic disease. The stem cells they harvest from the cloned embryo would carry the same genes. And this would give them a new way of studying the disease. This is a unique way of exploring the onset of complex diseases that we know very little about at the moment. And it's also a way of, uh, of developing new strategies that may really impact positively for those patients. And perhaps in a relatively short term, you know, 10 years plus, but, you know, a relatively short term. What sort of diseases are we talking about here? One is motor neurone disease. In late 1996, my whole world, and that of my wife and our two very young daughters, was turned completely upside down. I was diagnosed with motor neurone disease. Motor neurone disease progressively kills the neurons that carry the messages from our brain to the muscles in our four limbs, and those that control swallowing and breathing. And so all of those muscles become progressively paralysed until we die. Progressively and slowly, motor neurone disease has paralysed much of my hands, arms, feet and legs. It has partially dislocated both of my shoulders. Now my neck muscles are starting to collapse so that keeping my head up is becoming increasingly difficult. So what are the ethical issues raised by nuclear transfer, or, as it's sometimes called, therapeutic cloning? I have several concerns about transferring a somatic cell nucleus into an enucleated egg, because this does create an embryo. It's a cloned embryo. And this is a very unnatural way of initiating human life, particularly when the motivation is a user to destroy it. I believe that when you create an embryo through somatic cell nuclear transfer, you're really just copying someone's DNA. You're producing cells that have an identical copy of that patient's or the donor's DNA. 
I don't really see it as creating a new individual. However, I do recognise it's an incredibly emotive field and that there are people who feel passionately uh, and are passionately opposed to what I've just said. But I believe we have the opportunity to do some valuable medical research. I believe we should have legislation that allows somatic cell nuclear transfer in the rare case where there indeed is no other option to explore a particular disease condition. This would be a very powerful research tool and could lead to some more effective treatment options for patients. Therapeutic cloning raises another question. Should women be able to not just donate their eggs, but to sell them? All countries ban the sale of organs like kidneys, but some allow people to sell renewable tissues like blood. If we're going to use human eggs, we need to ensure that the women who are donating their eggs understand the procedure and give their full consent. There must be no payment for the eggs. The last thing we need to do is have a traffic or have a market in human eggs. That would be uh, unthinkable. One alternative to using human eggs could be to use animal eggs. Well, it would be preferable that you wouldn't have to source large numbers of eggs from women because they're not easily available under any circumstance. And so if there is an alternative, and if you could use rabbit eggs to generate those embryonic stem cells that you could use for drug screening, well, I think it would be perfectly okay for me because, you know, it's a resource that enables you to get to the end point as quickly as possible because there are large numbers of rabbits and rabbits produce large numbers of eggs so you don't really have the same issues that uh, confront you with, say, primates or, or, or humans. I have read about uh, the possibility of using an animal egg instead of a human egg. Now, this would give rise to what we call a hybrid embryo. But the genes would all come from the somatic cell nucleus. They would be human genes, and they would give rise to this hybrid. Well, I see this as horrendous to start off a hybrid human life in that fashion. And secondly, we don't know exactly what it would be I don't think we should try to do it to find out what it would be, what its potential would be. And I think we're running close to the wire of destroying a human life that might be disabled by being put into an animal egg rather than a human egg. And I think this is really playing with human life and it is not for good, it's not good for what's being done. <laughs> to create a cloned embryo raises another question. Instead of using it to get stem cells, could it be used to make a cloned baby? This is called reproductive cloning. Many countries have already banned it. However, if scientists do learn how to clone human embryos, there may well be people who will want to produce a genetic copy of themselves. Sheep and other animals have been produced from cloned embryos, but there's been many problems. The problem right at the moment clearly is that the, the method is unsafe. The, it's a very high proportion of these embryos. 99% of them will not develop and they won't develop to term. But those that do, a large proportion of those have abnormalities. And there's a lot of the animals that are produced will die during gestation, during pregnancy or birth. And thereafter, they're still unstable because, uh, you know, they have differences in their genetic makeup which predisposes them to sudden, unexpected death. If they implant a cloned embryo, there is a probability, some possibility at least, that it could go on to form an offspring, and that's called reproductive cloning. Now, none of the scientists want to do that, but a, an embryo has been formed, a human life has been formed, and it has a certain uh, possibility of forming a complete offspring. Now, because it doesn't give rise to a live birth, it doesn't mean to say there wasn't a human life 
from day one until it dies. Then there's the issue for many scientists uh, about um, why it's really necessary because there are a lot of reproductive strategies that enable people to have children. Maybe they don't have to always be genetically the same as the mother and father. Maybe uh, you have to have donor eggs or donor sperm or something. But that would seem to us a reasonable alternative uh, than to really be reproducing as a single genetic parent because it leaves out somebody else. In fact, uh, you know, if it's a, a man wanting to do that, it leaves out the woman, the wife. So we think that there are issues at the social level here uh, as well, and major issues which are not seemingly well comprehended. But the reason for doing reproductive cloning in our mind is that it's a narcissistic desire to have a child in your own image, and we don't think that's the basis for for good, healthy family. We don't know what the outcomes of our research are going to be. That's clearly the nature of research. It tends to be an assumption really from the media that the fact that we're working in this area and that we anticipate that we can make some progress that there will be cures relatively soon. These cells were only discovered and reported on in 1998 and we entered the area in reporting our work in 2000 so this is an extremely short period of time so it would be unreasonable to expect these cells to be used in any clinical mode until we've been through a lot of testing and a lot of research to demonstrate their usefulness in animal models or preclinical models. We also have to check that there are no risks associated with transplanting stem cells. We believe there will be benefits. If there's no benefit, okay, but if there's harmful effects, we really have to have tested those properly in animals before actually transplanting them into patients. It would be very easy to convince people to do the experiments tomorrow in patients. But what we're trying to do now is actually to slow the process down a little bit to prevent over-enthusiastic clinicians with very sick patients, sometimes in great pain, applying this technology too fast in the clinic. And, and there's an ethical responsibility there in terms of the clinician and also the, the ethical boards not to give approval too soon before we've done the proper animal experiments. So this is... Um the, the measurements that they're going to use for the trial. Yep. I suppose it's disappointing for many patients to realise the solutions aren't tomorrow and we have to be very careful in protecting patients uh, from our own enthusiasm and I think that's a serious ethical issue. This is just one of the many issues raised by stem cell research and the debate is unlikely to be over any time soon. For as research moves ahead, new discoveries will lead to new medical techniques and new ethical questions.